All right, and welcome back to Logan Simmons Photography. It's great to have you here today, and I want to take a look at another Adobe product. Yesterday, we took a look at Adobe Photoshop Camera, which is a really cool, kind of weird photo capture app and editing app. In fact, if you haven't seen that on YouTube, you can click that link up there and watch that. But I want to take a look at kind of a more traditional program, which is Adobe Photoshop Express, in this case on iPhone. It's available for Android. I think you can even get it on your Windows PC as well. But before we do that, uh, make sure you're subscribed here to the channel. Click that button so you can see right when the video comes out. Helps us out a lot too. And if you do like the video, you know, make sure you like it, watch it till the end, see what you think, and hit that like button if you do. Uh, but what is Adobe Photoshop Express? Well, uh, there's a lot of different programs that say Adobe Photoshop on them. We looked at the one yesterday, Adobe Photoshop Camera, which is available on Android and iOS. As far as those mobile apps, there's also an Adobe Lightroom app that does some photo editing uh, with obviously some organizational capability for your photos. There's Adobe Photoshop Fix, which is yet another editing program with a Photoshop name, maybe a little bit easier to use. Uh, you have Adobe uh, Photoshop Mix, where you can cut things out, uh, more traditional design work. You have Adobe Photoshop Sketch, all sorts of things. I thought it's kind of got to meet in the middle there. This is primarily a photo editing app. And I've got the uh, program running right here on my iPhone. So I want to just show you kind of where you start. Uh, you can open up JPEGs. You can open up raw images if they happen to be there. But I'm going to go ahead and hit this image right here. And let's take a look. So here we go. And I'm going to go ahead. You'll notice a couple different things here. Along the bottom, you do have here, of course, the uh, uh, different little modes you can flip through there like so if you look up here there's also an auto correct option so i can hit that i guess it thinks it's a little bit too bright there we can export there with that button right there and there's different options of course we can send that to uh, if you have the subscription to lightroom photoshop to creative cloud or what's easy to uh, there is an option if i can find it here to simply uh, save it to your uh, your basically your photo library there on your phone. There it is, camera roll right there at the top. I can do dimensions, quality, stuff like that. All fairly easy to use. Uh, but let's go ahead and just start here at the bottom and go through. Now, this, uh, you know, if we want to do some design work, for instance, you know, with this particular picture, I want to make a, a travel brochure here with this particular picture to visit this destination. Maybe I want to click on something like this here and I could say, you know, exploring the world uh, there. And uh, this is actually taken in Georgia, not a uh, necessarily exotic location. We could do that. And if I click on it there, I have some editing options. I, of course, can make it a little bit bigger or move stuff around, you know, whatever you wanted to do uh, in that particular, you know, way. And I can, let's see, if I hit edit, I can change the, the text there. All fairly, fairly easy to use there. I think I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. I'll set the undo button there and we'll go back to where we were. Whoops, actually, let's not do that. That'll get us out of the photo completely. So, you know, lots of fun stuff. I can specify my themes if I wanted to do that there. Fairly easy to use. Now, if you go over here to this next one where that little color palette looking thing is, these are different looks. So if you have something saved right there that you, what look that you particularly like, you can just go ahead and put it here. Let's go ahead and say, I don't know, charm. What does charm look like? So there's normal, charm one, charm two, charm three, charm four. You know, I could do something like that. Not a big fan of that. Let's see if we can find something maybe a little bit better. Let's get out of that undo. And let's see, what kind of other stuff might we have? Oh, I don't know, maybe black and white. That would be fun. Let's see, um, high contrast, black and white. You know, something a little moody there. We could do that. Infrared, of course, sepia toning. We can adjust that there. So if you do want to make some very quick edits, they do have those look options. Uh, not quite to the same extent as you know, some of the other Adobe apps, like the Photoshop camera app, but you know, fun nonetheless. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Let's kind of move over to some other things there. Here we go, overlay. So if I want to, you know, create some kind of weird visual effects, I can go ahead and do that. You know, for some reason I wanted a pattern on my picture with a, like a fingerprint, I could do that. Maybe there's a crime there and I want to use that picture and emphasize that, who knows. And you know, here's, maybe there's some ghosts there in the woods. You could go ahead and do that. 
Uh, all sorts of really cool stuff here. Let's see, whoops, I'm gonna get jumped around a little bit. You know, watercolor, all sorts of crazy stuff I could do, but I don't think I wanna do any of that particularly. Um, so, you know, pretty cool stuff right there. Just trying to figure, get back where I was, there we go. Um, hey, you know, raindrops, that could be kind of cool. Like if I'm, maybe I'm photographing out of a window or something and there's my scene. So lots of fun stuff there, let's get out of that and let, we'll go ahead and go back. Now I do have a crop tool right here, and you know there's some automatic options right there. For example, you know Facebook, Instagram has certain sizes you have to obey by. You can make that crop right there. Of course, you can do a free crop. Let's see if it's going to let me do that. There we go. Come on, phone. There we go. Maybe I don't want some of that there on the top. There we go. So I can go ahead and say, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That's good. And so you can just automatically went in there. Uh, selection tools. So basically, here what you're going to see light color, contrast. These are your basic editing tools that you always have. But there is a masking option right there. So for example, um, you know, it's, it has some presets right here I could do. Let's say right about there you can see. But I can go ahead and add stuff as well. Let's see if it's going to let me do that here. Come on, computer. There we go, brush right there, excuse me. And I can go ahead and increase the size. And we can go ahead and just paint along here. Uh, and then we'll get, of course, our edits. Now I'm gonna have to go behind that little toolbar right there to get it. Let's see if I can get everything in there. Yeah, pretty good, a little extra tweaking there. We don't have all day. Um, then I'll go ahead and say, you know, light. You know, maybe I wanna go ahead and make that particular area a little bit brighter. If I can do something crazy, I don't wanna do that. And then let's say, I'll make it a little bit more contrasty. And let's see what else I can go ahead and do. Color temperature, maybe I want to make it a little bit more warmer. Uh, and then maybe, oh, I don't know, for some reason it doesn't let me do uh, vibrance, it, which actually reminds me of the regular Photoshop. You can't do vibrance with an adjustment brush necessarily. Uh, but there's our saturation, maybe a little more clarity, really make it pop out. Maybe that's what we want to do there. Oh, pretty good. Sharpening, and of course, actually, it just zoomed in there for us, which is nice. I don't know if we need sharpening too much. Maybe just a little bit there will be good. Perfect. Uh, HSL adjustments, uh, saying I can't apply that in a particular selection. Again, very similar to like Adobe Camera Raw. If you have a specific selection as opposed to the entire image, you are a little bit more limited there. So that's pretty easy to work with. Let's see if I can get back to where I was here. There we go. I just zoom out like I do on any other device. And let's go ahead and get out of this and try and do full. There we go. And then maybe I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a vignette there. Of course, I can do a white vignette like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Optics. And let's say if there's a lens profile there. Again, very, very easy to do this here. There is a healing brush here. It is a particular brush. You know, let's say this particular leaf down here. Maybe I don't want that. So I can go in here. And actually, I guess I'm trying to, it's hiding behind my figure there, but you know, it did a decent job there of trying to make it go away. So we'll go ahead and say that. You've got your red eye if we had a, you know, a portrait or something like that, pretty nice to use. Go ahead and add text if we wanted to do that, you know, kind of like those design options, but a little bit more specific here. Strong and fierce, I don't know if that's how I describe the image. But we could certainly do that there. Oh, we can do a mine there. There you go. I'm on vacation. Don't call me. If you want to do that for your Instagram, you could do that. That's pretty cool there. And just trying to look through some of these other options. If you want to do stickers, I don't think that would work this particular image. But if you want to put a cat there, you can go ahead and do that. Pretty cool. Uh, borders, if you wanted to do that, you know, some little bit, you know, that's a little tacky in my book. But you could do that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And uh, now if you go down here where it says Photoshop here, these actually do require some you know, a subscription to Adobe Photoshop, which now it's only available as a subscription. So I'm not going to touch those on there. You do need to have an Adobe account to use this, but a free one will work. You're just not going to have the synchronization with Photoshop. So, you know, I could say send now to Photoshop and I could work on it on my Mac or Windows PC. Cool stuff. Yeah, I could look at, you know, some, if I want to do some crazy uh, mosaics there. Also sorts of fun stuff there. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do in this case, I'm going to go ahead and save this one out. We'll go ahead and do that. I think I'm just going to go ahead and save it to the camera roll. Maybe I do want to edit my quality just a little bit. I want to say, let's do maximum. I don't want to lose any quality there. And pixels, I guess that is the original pixels right there, but I could change that. And we'll go ahead and go save to camera roll. And it says now your photo has been saved to camera roll. So um, again, a very basic editing app um, that I guess it does give you definitely more than the Apple Photos app. 
that's in your phone. So would I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and give it a try. It is free from Adobe. I think it's probably the best balanced of the Photoshop editing apps uh, that are available on mobile. Now, it does not have layers and all those sorts of design things to, to a great extent. Uh, they do have some other apps uh, that are probably a little bit better for that. But, you know, hey, give it a try. There's a link down there below. And uh, definitely appreciate you watching the video today. Again, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you like the video, hit that like button. Help us out a lot. So appreciate you watching. You have a good one. Bye-bye.